What's up everyone, it's Mark aka The Drood once again here to give you as promised part 2 of the Stylus Jellyfish tutorial. Last time we pretty much easily created this beauty here from the simple images plane and set a light as small tweaks to adjust the color. This time we will build the armature for our creature that will allow it to be animated along the timeline. If you missed part 1 of the tutorial, check out the link that will appear right here, right now, right Okay. As always, this tutorial might not be suitable for very beginners as it requires a minimal knowledge of the Blender interface and basic commands. Remember, the purpose of this tutorial is not to teach you how to replicate what I've done in the video, but possibly to inspire you and show you a viable technique for creating similar stuff. At least this is the actual workflow I'm adopting at this stage of my learning path. Wow, now that was too serious. Okay, time to shut up, Mark. Thank you for being here and enjoy the second part of the tutorial. Okay, so last time we left our cute jellyfish all set and ready to be animated. If you haven't done it already, remember to parent the light to the body of the creature with Ctrl P, so this way it will move along with her. Yeah, it's a she, okay? So press Shift S to bring the 3D cursor right at the origin of our selected light, as we need to start building an armature with Shift A, Armature, Single Bone. It's basically like a skeletal structure for our jellyfish, but don't worry, it will be super easy in this case since we want a stylized effect. By pressing Tab and going into Edit Mode, we can add new bones using the key E that's normally used for extrusion when modeling. For this simple stylized creature and the purpose of this tutorial, four bones will be more than enough to complete our armature. Now, before parenting this lovely jellyfish to the armature with automatic weights, unless you like the idea of her moving like she got a stick up her ass, we need to subdivide the model multiple times for the weight painting to give a more, let's say, functional effect. Then select the jellyfish body, right click, subdivide and choose the number of cuts of your liking knowing that the higher the number you set, the more precise will be the automatic weight painting connected to the armature, which is not necessarily always a good thing. Plus you might end up with too many polygons which are not needed in this case. So left click the body first, then shift left click the armature, you can double check the active item by the brighter color in the outliner here. Ctrl P and deform the armature with automatic weights. See what I'm talking about? Now she looks really cute when you rotate her bones. By the way, the shortcut to move from object mode to pose mode is Ctrl Tab after selecting the armature. Oh, look how cute she is! Looks like she's wagging her tail! Yeah, I know, jellyfish don't have tail. Damn, let me dream, man! Anyway! Thanks to this amazing video from Kuma1024 that I found on YouTube, I could get a great reference for the actual movement of our jellyfish to help myself with the keyframing process. Well, let's start by setting up the interface for a more comfortable workflow by creating a new window for the action editor that you can find selecting the dope sheet from this menu here and the action editor from this menu here. Give a name to your animation by pressing new and calling it however you like. Make sure we're in pose mode, select your armature, A to select all the bones, press I to set the starting keyframe with location, rotation and scale. We'll need all of those parameters. Click here for auto king mode, which will automatically record your keyframes every time you change even just a single value. It's what we did already with the magic particles trail tutorial, remember? If you haven't watched it yet, SHAME ON YOU AND GO CLICK HERE NOW! I'm kidding, forget about it. We need to focus here, peeps. As you can see, I'm struggling trying to figure out how the heck to replicate that movement we've seen before in the YouTube video, but we need to understand that animation is an art that needs to be cultivated with lots of practice and 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 practice. Okay, you got the idea. I myself feel like I've just started exploring this world, which is an awesome source of frustration, but also can bring incredible satisfaction. Satisfaction. Sorry, I really can't help it sometimes, okay? All of this nonsense to say, use your references, a bit of imagination and your creativity and don't stop practicing. Things can only improve from this base. That's what I keep telling myself every time I do something involved in digital art. The struggle is real, guys, and I totally feel you, because I'm aboard with you on that fucking boat. 
The key for a good movement for our jellyfish, even if stylized, is to understand this sort of suction she does every time she moves a bit further. Also we want this action to loop, so we'll need to duplicate the first keyframes using Shift D and moving them on the last frame of this action timeline. You can tell I'm not even sure what I'm actually doing, as when I started I thought 60 frames were enough for my action just to stretch my animation later up till 100 frames. Told y'all? Yes, because jellyfishes are beautiful, elegant creatures and their dance is so mesmerizing it needs the proper amount of frames to be fully appreciated. Ok, enough of this rambling. Once you're pleased with the loop animation, it's time to think about moving the jellyfish within the space framed by our camera. And for that, I found very convenient, once again, the use of empty objects like plain axes. So go on with Shift A and create it right where we left our 3D cursor before, and then Ctrl P to parent it. Then of course we need a camera, so if you don't have one already because you might have deleted it at the beginning, don't worry and just get a new one, always with Shift A. Then press Ctrl Alt Numpad 0 to bring the camera facing exactly the direction you're looking in the 3D space. By the way, I was almost forgetting to show you how to loop your jellyfish action. From the menu here to the left of the action editor, select graph editor and then make sure to select all the keyframes we created before from start to finish. Then press Shift E to set the keyframe extrapolation and choose Make Cyclic, which is a modifier that will infinitely multiply the curve of your animation along the timeline. Then if we just extend the frame range right here, you will see our jellyfish keeps swimming in place. Now we can focus on the animation of our empty that will cause our lovely ocean wonder to move as well since we parented them before. The workflow here is pretty much the same like before. I try to catch the momentum when the suction of the jellyfish is at its maximum to give a boost to the speed of the empty along the space, thus creating the effect of a push being given by the release of the suction itself. I'm not exactly sure of what I just said, but hopefully it'll be clear enough even if the video is slightly accelerated. Like I said before, animation, besides trying to follow the famous 12 principles from Disney's animators, is something personal and we have to practice until we find what fits best for us. And finally the last bit, the pulsing light. This part is pretty simple, turn off the lights in the world properties and turn on bloom on the EV engine settings to get a much clearer idea of the effect we want. Now we just need to play with the value of the power setting of our light by moving ourselves along the timeline and pressing that small gem to the right of the value whenever we want to record a frame. Depending on your liking, you can either adjust and tweak the power along the whole animation or if you want to loop it as well, go on to the graph editor like we did for the motion before, which is what I just did for the purpose of this tutorial. That's it folks, I hope you enjoyed this little journey deep in the virtual ocean with me and my adorable jellyfish. Leave your feedbacks in the comment section below if you like it or not, if you know much better techniques that I could actually learn from, and finally share this video if you think it might be interesting for somebody else. Your support means everything. Thanks again from yours truly the Drood, and I'll see you the next time. Bye!